The Century Welcome Centre is unique, probably at two fundamental levels. One is the co-location of theory with practice, experiment, coupled with the fact that you had the Gatsby Charitable Foundation and the Wellcome Trust and coming together to create a institute that is only interested in bringing into the building the very best young minds in the world. Right from the beginning, and I have to say this is a tremendous aspect of, of Ian Ritchie and his team, we as neuroscientists tried to learn a bit of architecture and what the constraints were uh, in terms of what they could actually build. And they, on, on the other hand, tried to actually uh, learn enough neuroscience so that they would be able to essentially satisfy our needs for, for building a building which we would be comfortable with. I'm realizing more and more that the building is designed to sort of mix this entire domain of neuroscience from people coming up with ideas about what brains might be to people who have data about what brains are doing and create a, a new kind of thing that we're in the process of trying to define. And I think that's what's exciting about the SWC to me is that um, it feels possible here. In the world of neuroscience, you have electrophysiology, you have molecular, you have theory, you have other forms. All of that is possible here. Nothing is prescribed, nothing is out of bounds. The building is fundamentally adaptable spatially. It has verticality within the labs and it has a plug and play system of services which are flexible and can allow the scientists to design their own labs with relative freedom and relatively low cost. I'm firmly of the school which says that design should reflect the function of a building. I really think that it's important, especially if you're going to build a science building, a laboratory building, that you take into account what is going to happen in there, and we have done that. In many ways, I think the SWC is a place where coming up with the good questions for the science of neuroscience to ask is actually going to be our major output. And if the SWC produces the questions for the rest of the field to go and throw all the resources at, that I think is a huge success. To become a neuroscientist, you have to have a genuine interest in understanding the world. And the fact that you've honed in on the brain is the one organ through which we understand everything. So it attracts the very intelligent because there's a genuine desire to understand the fundamentals of life.